as we all know, this is my uh, disclosure regarding to this topic. As we all know, ACL injury every year, we see more than more ever, and increasingly we see less of patients with their injured ACLs. And we are tra trying to treat them as our uh, in, as in the best way we can. Of course, we still should consider conservative treatment for ACL injuries, like in older age with lower activity level patients, and also if the patients have good subjective findings, but objective findings are bad, but the subjective findings, subjective findings of the patients are good. Uh, however, the role of the exercise to prevent osteoarthritis is not still clear. But we all know that, according to the literature, the delay between the delay of surgery between 90 days to one year over 40 years of age does not increase the risk of meniscus injury. However, a delay of over one year increases the risks, especially at the medial meniscus. The patients can lose their medial meniscus. So, According to the literature, we know that delayed ACL reconstruction has worse outcomes. Also, osteoarthritis following ACL injury, if you look to the meta-analysis, the osteoarthritis of the non-operative patients a little bit higher than the operated ones. Or uh, the patients who can have total knee arthroplasty are higher in the patients who did not have any ACL surgery who were treated conservatively. So the real prognostic factor is the concomitant injuries that we see with the ACL. Chronic instability like neglected ACL injury or inadequate surgery or re-injury uh, that needs revision with the recurrent episodes of instability at the patients causes meniscus and cartilage damages. That means it begins early osteoarthritis in the knee. So don't forget, ACL is not itself only a reason of pain. ACL is a reason of instability. If the patient with a neglected ACL injury has pain, then we should think about the concomitant injuries like meniscal tears or cartilage degeneration or cartilage losses. So the prognosis for the prognosis, the concomitant injuries are important. Patients with pain and chronic instability, if you see a patient like this, always we should check the opposite knee for if there is a malalignment in this knee or also is there a constitutional virus, virus in the other knee too. So we should or we may add proximal tibial osteotomy in our ACL reconstruction or revision uh, cases. If there is cartilage damage in the medial compartment, if there is a loss of meniscal, meniscus volume, or the patient had a partial meniscectomy or subtotal meniscectomy less thing, or he has an irreparable meniscal injury, and if the ACL deficient knee has a higher varus deformity than the compared, when we compare to the intact knee, then we should consider about uh, performing an HTO combined with the ACL surgery. Else, one ends up with a staple but painful knee. So various alignment may cause a failure of ACL uh, reconstruction. So we should consider osteotomies. What are the indications for combined surgeries of HTO and ACL reconstruction or revision? Medial compartment osteoarthritis with various alignment and ACL injury or failed ACL injury, neglected or failed ACL injury, or various alignment with ACL injury, and the patient has a meniscal injury and medial compartment arthrosis or double, triple various alignment too. What are the co contraindications? Of course, three compartmental arthrosis, highly decreased range, highly decreased range of more like less than 100 degrees, or high grade of cartilage damage in the medial compartment. What are the relative contraindications? A uh, high grade patellofemoral arthrosis that we can, uh, it's important the examination of the patient is important. If the patient has radiologically patellofemoral arthrosis, however, uh, in the examination, he doesn't have any uh, patellofemoral pain, then it's a relative contraindication. Or we can uh, uh, find a, another solution like resurfacing the patellofemoral joint. The patient 
over 60 is a relative contraindication, but the activity level of the patient is more important than his or her age. So smoking for osteotomy, if you consider osteotomy, you should consider if the patient is smoking or not. And the obesity is another relative contraindication too. So when HDO alone, when HDO combined with ACL reconstruction or revision, if the main symptom is pain, then with various alignment, then we should consider the HDO. If the main symptom is instability, but no pain, so if there is not more than six or seven degrees of various, then we should, we can consider only H, uh, ACL surgery. If the patient has a higher level of activity, uh, then uh, we should consider with ACL reconstruction and HDO. If the patient's activity level is low, then we can perform only HDO alone. So let's uh, talk about a case. This is a 30 years old male uh, who had uh, 10 years ago an ACL reconstruction. You see a vertical tunnels. Also, uh, of course, it failed soon and he didn't have any operation more, but now he has a, you see the medial compartment arthrosis with recurrent swellings, effusions, and he has a lot of pain. So how is the, uh, how we perform this surgery? First, the first incision with the longitudinal incision, not the oblique one, we perform the ACL harvest, uh, graft harvesting. We, we, I used only uh, all inside techniques. So only a ST semitendinosus graft is enough for me, like 25, 26 centimeters. I can get a 8.5 or nine millimeters of graft. If it is thinner than eight or less, then I can get gracilis too. So uh, after getting the uh, ACL graft, then I perform the femoral tunnel, anatomic femoral tunnel at the footprint, according to the uh, size of my graft. So I use the uh, all inside technique for the femur too. At the femur, after opening the femoral tunnel, I postpone opening the tibial tunnel and go directly to uh, osteotomy. Maybe you can perform your osteotomy a little bit in the distal part, but doing uh, the, uh, after performing my osteotomy uh, i uh, don't put the anterior screw of the plate because i will put a, a, a tibial tunnel there so i uh, after opening the tibial tunnel and fixing the my acl uh, reconstruction or revision my graft then i can put the uh, the uh, anterior screw without harming my graft. The all inside technique is a very advantageous technique uh, with short grafts, thick grafts, and also preventing the harm of the uh, graft. So you see how I open my uh, tibial tunnel, anatomic tibial tunnel, according to the uh, footprint. Then you see how I pass my screw. So you can convergent, divergent, uh, change your angle. But you have a short tunnel here. So it's a socket, so your uh, graft doesn't interfere with your screw. That's a big advantage. So uh, I replaced the uh, new ACL revision in my revision case. So this is the uh, post-operative X-rays and uh, orthorentinograms. This is the tenth week. You can see this patient got weight uh, after uh, not performing any sports with his swelling knees now he can uh, give weight because he can exercise very well so take home messages neglected acl injuries uh, or failure of acl reconstructions may lead to osteoarthritis don't forget be careful about the malalignment in patients with pain and chronic instability and please consider combined ACL, acl surgery reconstruction or revision with hdo simultaneously thank you very much for your patience